Hi guys, welcome to this video of Twilight Imperium. Today we are going to talk about the barony of Netnev. In the beginning of the video I will talk a little about the basics that you absolutely should do during the first round and later on I will tell you how your faction can help you getting the very best first round. And what is a very good first round for the barony? Well for that you need to gain control of three systems, utilize your six resources in your home system in a good way, research one tech, and build six units in your home system. So let me show you how. To highlight a few of their strengths is that whenever you have built a fleet of dreadnoughts, you can soak hits like no other faction in the game. And that's because of their racial ability that cancels two hits instead of one. Another strength they have is that they have six resources in their home system which is more than any other faction in the game. As for weaknesses, I see that the barony got three of them. The first one is that they don't have an optimal starting fleet with only a carrier and a dreadnought and three infantry. So right off the bat, you can only gain control of a maximum of three planets. So that's something you need to solve in your first round. The second thing is that your faction is very resource heavy so that you can build your beloved dreadnoughts and they cost four resources each so you will of course need a lot of resources and the last thing is that you don't have very much influence especially in your home system so you may have a bad command counter economy during the game when it comes to either building or selecting your map slice you want to prioritize resources over influence so that you can build your dreadnoughts and maybe also your flagship. But you also want to look for either a red or a yellow uh, tech skip because that can be beneficial to you when researching technology. And I will come more into that later in the video. So what to tech? You start with uh, anti-mass deflectors and plasma scoring. Uh, these are both two pretty good uh, technologies. Um, the anti-mass deflectors is not really important. Uh, the important thing is that you got a blue tech uh, to start with uh, and the plasma scoring can uh, actually help you. Um, it says when one, or, when one or more of your units use bombardment or space cannon, one of those units may roll one additional die. And that uh, complements uh, what I would strongly recommend you to get and that is the Dreadnought 2. And there are two reasons for that. The first one is the increased movement from one to two systems, but also the ability that says this unit cannot be destroyed by direct hit action cards. And that's because whenever you unlock your commander here, uh, then after one of your units uses sustained damage, you may gain one trade good. So if you have the Dreadnought 2, you can completely safely use this uh, uh, sustained damage ability and earn some trade goods from it. So that's a really strong pick. And the other uh, technology I would certainly go for is the faction technology called the non-Euclidean shielding. And it says when one of your units uses sustained damage, cancel two hits instead of one. And that just makes your Dreadnought fleets uh, even stronger since you can uh, soak even more hits. But this technology is not relevant until you actually uh, have some uh, dreadnoughts out on the board so you don't have to strive for this uh, in the first round but if you do have a, a red technology planet then you can actually uh, research this in round one if you like but i would go for the dreadnought 2 first and as you can see it requires two blue technologies and one yellow so you start with antimars as the first one which is pretty good uh, but then I would definitely go for Gravity Drive and it says after you activate a system apply a plus one to the move value of one of your ships during this tactical action. So you can actually use this technology besides getting uh, closer to the Dreadnought 2 because in the first round you want to go for uh, at least two systems but hopefully three and Gravity Drive can help you uh, reach that third system unless you've got planets or on all three tiles uh, adjacent to your home system. And as I mentioned earlier, if you have a yellow text skip planet, then you can actually uh, s skip researching any yellow technologies for now. 
and just go directly for the Dreadnought 2. And again, early in the game, that extra movement will help you move around faster in the galaxy. And if you don't have a red technology, the tech skip planet, then as the second red one, before you can research this, then I would go for the AI development algorithm. And it says, when you research a unit upgrade technology, you may exhaust this card to ignore any one prerequisite. And again, if you don't have a, a yellow tech skip planet, then you can actually use the AI development algorithm to skip the yellow tech. And then that would save you a command counter and four resources on researching Sarween tools, getting you the Dreadnought 2 uh, a little bit cheaper. So what strategy card to pick in the first round? And this is my ranked list. So my top choice would be uh, technology. And I will go into more details about that strategy card in the example of a first round I will show in the next part of this video. So I'll not go through that one here, but instead take the rest of them. Uh, my second choice would be Warfare. And it says, remove one of your command tokens from the game board, then gain one command token. So basically you can unlock one of the systems you already activated with a command token, and then move those ships once more. And then you get to redistribute any number of command tokens on your command sheet. And you could also consider reducing the size of your fleet pool to get more tactical command tokens available for you. One downside with the Warfare strategy card is that your home system got six resources in it. And if you decide to do the secondary of technology, which is spend one token from your strategy pool and four resources to research one technology, then you will exhaust this planet to, to pay for that technology, leaving you with only two resources for, for building uh, more units in your, in your home system at your space dock. So that's a fairly high price to pay if you want to do that. So with the Warfare strategy card, you could have run into to this minor issue. The next one is uh, politics, and it says, choose a player other than the speaker, that player gains the speaker zone. And then I would grab it for myself. That would be my primary purpose of getting a politics so that when the next round starts, you get to pick a strategy card first, but you also get uh, to draw two action cards and you get to look at the two top cards uh, of the agenda deck. And then you can decide whether those cards are at the bottom, uh, at the top or uh, one in each place. Then the remaining four, I put them side by side. That's because uh, I think you should follow the public objectives if you need to pick one of these four. And for leadership, that could be lead from the front, spend a total of three tokens from your tactic and or strategy pools. So if this public objective comes out, then leadership would obviously help you scoring this public objective. And for diplomacy and trade, that is spend three influence, three resources and three trade goods. And especially the trade goods, you need trade for, for that card. But otherwise, diplomacy could also help you unexhaust two planets, and then you would have the three influence and three resources you can spend in the status phase to score this objective. And this one up here is spend five trade goods, and again, the trade strategy card would uh, help you with that. The last one is construction. The primary ability is place one PDS or one space dock on a planet you control. Place one PDS on a planet you control. And since you only start with a space dock in your home system, you will need three more structures to score the build defenses public objective. So getting construction will help you with two of those, and then you just need one more. And the last one is have structures on planets, or three planets outside of your home system. And again, the construction strategy card will help you getting two of those. So let's have a look at how the first round can look if you choose the technology strategy card. And um, with us around the table, we got the yellow player who picked construction and the green player who picked warfare. And the other three players are not relevant for, uh, for this example here. So let's just say that the yellow player gains control of his first system and uh, the green player does the same. And now it gets to be our turn. And now we can actually uh, consider playing the technology card as the very first one, forcing everyone to think about do they need technology in round one, or do they want to use their home system resources on the second area of warfare? And with that, you can actually build in your home system without activating it, so you can, so you can move uh, your units afterwards. So that is a little bit of a dilemma for them. So let's just say that we play the technology strategy card immediately, and it says research one technology, spend six resources to research one technology. And I would only do the first one, and that is to research one technology for three, even though we have the six resources in our home system. 
but I would definitely uh, prioritize getting uh, more fleet and units out uh, over uh, researching one more technology. So I would go for gravity drive <coughs> and maybe some of the other players uh, also choose to research something. That's entirely up to them. And let's uh, pass the turn along and everybody takes the turn, the yellow, the green, and then it gets to be us. And now we can finally move out and we can actually use gravity drive immediately. Take our destroyer, one infantry, and maybe the Oh, the Dreadnought and the Destroyer, sorry. And gain control of Lodo out here. And then it gets to be everybody else. And let's say that the yellow player plays the construction uh, strategy card and we could use a command token to put down a PDS or a space dock out here. Don't do it in your home system because then you will lock it down and then you cannot build on the secondary of warfare. But I would really consider uh, how I use my uh, command tokens as we don't have too many of them and we don't have much influence in our slice. And now the Warfare player decides to play uh, the Warfare strategy card and we do the secondary. So we pay one token from the strategy pool and we have six resources to build for. So we might as well build one more carrier, four infantry and one destroyer. That's three, for, three resources for the carrier and two resources for the four infantry and one resource for the destroyer and that's a total of uh, six units and that's also the build capacity of our home system with that space dock on it. And now it gets to be our turn after the warfare player. So now we can gain control of this system out here and everybody else takes their turns and as our last action we can get this system right here. Maybe take that fighter along with us. And this is how you both get to use your six resources in a really good way and gain the gravity technology so that you can gain control of three systems in your first round. I found these two public objectives that I think are fairly easy for the Barony player to score. The first one is spend eight resources. And since you have the most powerful home system of all the factions uh, in the game, um, that has uh, six resources in it from the beginning, then it should be fairly simple to uh, find two more resources uh, during the first round, and then you can actually score this uh, public objective. The second one is uh, raise a fleet, have five or more non-fighter ships in one system, and you have this uh, Armada faction ability that gives you a plus two to your fleet supply and you start with three command tokens in your fleet supply. So you already have enough tokens uh, there. So you can actually uh, build those five non-fighter ships and then score this public objective. When it comes to easy secret objectives for the Baron player, I found these five. The first one is gather a mighty fleet, have five dreadnoughts on the game board. And since again, you have this uh, Amada faction ability, you can uh, have five uh, non-fighter units in one system already and you want to build dreadnoughts. So go ahead and collect the resources and build your dreadnoughts and then you can score this one. The next objective is demonstrate your power. It's an action phase. Have three or more non-fighter ships in the active system at the end of a space combat and you want big fleets because you have this plus two. So it should be fairly easy to you or for you to have um, at least three more uh, non-fighter ships uh, at the end of a space combat and then you can score this action phase secret objective. The next one is uh, hoard raw materials, control planets that have a combined resource value of at least 12 and uh, your home system already got six of those uh, resources so you basically just need to find uh, a few more planets so that you total that to 12 and then you can score this uh, secret objective. Number four is make an example of their world. Use bombardment to destroy the last of a player's ground forces on a planet. And this is a, an easy objective to score because of your dreadnoughts uh, once more. They have a, a strong bombardment ability and you want to build those uh, dreadnoughts. So just go ahead and find a, a good planet with a few ground forces on it and then uh, bombard them away. And the last one, produce en masse have units with a combined production value of at least eight in a single system. And here they refer to your space dock. 
and you can you already have a production value of six in your home system and that's because of the four resources on the planet and the space dock gives a plus two so then you're up to six so now you basically just need to either build one more uh, space dock in your home system or upgrade the one you have to space dock two Now I've mentioned that your dreadnoughts got sustained damage on them as a unit ability. I would also like to just remember or remind you that your mechs also have sustained damage. And your commander says after one of your units uses sustained damage, you may gain one trigger. It doesn't say dreadnoughts or ships, it says units. So that also applies to your mechs. So whenever they use sustained damage, you will also gain trade goods. And the same thing goes for your faction technology. When one of your units uses sustained damage, you can cancel two hits instead of one. So these two also make your mechs very, very strong. And one last tip is that you can sell your trade agreement to another player. It's basically worthless to you, in my opinion. You are a two commodity faction. So selling this to another player for just one trade good, or to make sure that you avoid some early aggression, then go ahead and, and sell it because yes, of course, uh, your opponent gets two trade goods whenever you are replenished, but it's not a big deal. So uh, go ahead and sell this and get that single trade good. I would say it's worth it. And that's it, guys. Those were my tips for playing the Barony of Lepna. I wish you good luck on your next game, and I hope you win. If you have any tips about this uh, faction, then please write them in the comments below. And if you want to see some good uses about the hero, then you can watch this video here. And I will see you in the next one.